Hello everyone. In today's video, I am going to show you one of the use case wherein we can leverage a very important functionality in SAP IBP supply planning called settings for TS supply planning. So this functionality has a very widespread usage and it can be used or leveraged to map multiple requirements that we keep on getting in different implementations. So today in this video, I am going to show you one such use case or one such requirement that I have got from my client and how I have mapped this, leveraging this functionality of settings, of settings for supply planning. So just to give you a bit of background, my client is primarily having a supply planning run, which is optimizer based. Now, when we are running the supply plan using optimizer, the optimizer generates a constraint plan. For example, if I have a demand of 10,000 at the DC, that demand flows from the DC to the factory as dependent demand. In this case, 10,000 is my demand at the DC and 10,000 is the dependent demand at the factory. But let's say in the factory, I have only capacity equivalent to produce 8,000 quantities. So what happens is during the optimizer run, once the optimizer generates the plan, even though the dependent demand that should have flown from the DC to the factory is 10,000, but that dependent demand will be overwritten with 8,000 because that's what is the constraint plan. And the entire quantity numbers will be updated from 10,000 to 8,000, which is mathematically correct. Now, the requirement that I got is planners said that whatever the result is coming is fine but at the same time i also need to see how much was my constraint demand and how much i am able to fulfill so that i can get a number of unfulfilled demand so that's the requirement based on which I have to leverage or use these settings for TS supply planning. Now, what I have done is following. So in order to achieve the requirement, I had to do certain configurations in IBP in this application. So what is that and what I have done? That is what I'm going to show you. So the settings for ts supply planning is a very planning area specific functionality and for that we have to select the planning area on which we want to activate the settings so in this case i have selected the planning area where i want to activate it so the beauty of this application is this applications allows us to change the default input output key figures for heuristics or optimizers it also allow us to change some of the attributes or the standard attribute that heuristics or optimizer utilizes with a custom attribute of my own so if you look here i am into the key figure section of the key figure tab of this application wherein you could see that all the standard input output key figures are already included here now what i did was in order to get the requirement what i have got i primarily created a simulation version called unconstrained version and in this app I have enabled version specific input output key figures. So if you look at this closely, you will see that, for example, the standard output key figure dependent demand 
in my baseline it is the standard key figure dependent demand whereas in the unconstrained version if you see the dependent demand key figure is not the standard one but a custom key figure which i have created so in this setting what happens is i am telling the system that i am having different input and output key figures at different versions and heuristics or optimizers respect these key figures all we need to do is to ensure that while creating these custom key figures we need to ensure that they are at the same planning level as the standard input output key figure is and all of these key figures should be marked as input to supply planning or output to supply planning or both so here what i have done is for dependent demand dependent location demand dependent production demand outbound location or outbound production demand i have enabled or activated version specific input key figures the objective is very simple that i will be running optimizer both in baseline as well as unconstrained version the only difference would be in the unconstrained version my resources are marked as infinite whereas in the baseline they are marked as finite and obviously the snop operator of the optimizer profile for baseline will be different to than of the unconstrained version so my objective is to take run both in baseline and in unconstrained version so that in unconstrained version since the resources are unconstrained i will have a correct or proper propagation of demand from dc to the factories then my objective is to do a version copy and copy the value of this key figure from unconstrained to baseline so when that happens primarily in the baseline itself the planners are able to see the constrained dependent demand and also the unconstrained dependent demand and based on that they can get the number or the quantity of unfulfilled dependent demand for a particular location product so once i have activated this settings i have saved and activated the planning area as well then what happened is i i primarily take parallel runs using the snop operator because i have created an application job template through which the optimizer runs both in the baseline as well as in the unconstrained so the sequence is something like that first take the master data mark the resource as infinite in the unconstrained version run the optimizer or the snop operator in the unconstrained version to generate the absolute demand propagation without any constraint copy that unconstrained dependent demand or related dependent demand key figure from the unconstrained version to baseline and then take a optimizer run in the baseline version with all the possible constraints now if you see here here what i have done is if you look into uh, this product location combination you will see that i have a key figure called total dependent demand unconstrained which is nothing but the key figure that i have selected here for the unconstrained version and this key figure total dependent demand is nothing but the standard dependent demand key figure so once the optimizer or the snop operator has run in the unconstrained version followed by the version copy 
I am getting my unconstrained propagated demand available and visible in the baseline version itself. And post the optimizer run in the baseline version, I also have the constrained supply or the constrained dependent demand that has been generated by the optimizer. Now, any difference between the unconstrained and the constrained dependent demand is what is my unfulfilled dependent demand or unfulfilled demand at a particular product location combination. So this number primarily helps planner to understand. And based on this understanding, they do different kind of simulation more in a mid to long term so as to ensure that the quantity of unfulfilled demand can be reduced as much as possible. It could be either by procuring more or adding additional capacities in factory or a mixture of both. This gives them the understanding of how they can maximize their demand fulfillment rate. So this is what I wanted to cover in this short video. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Please feel free to comment and share if you find this video useful.